Which one of these dashboards is more likely to get you hired as a data analyst? I think most hiring managers would agree with the dashboard on the right, and I hope you do too. And here's why, explained using UI and UX design fundamentals with some free resources along the way. But first, why do we even need to bother about this in the first place? Why do we need to spend so much time worrying about white space or balance or colors? Well, the role of a data analyst is to communicate insights to people that might not be so data technical, but they have a lot of power in the business and can make big decisions. And if you give them a dashboard or visualization that looks really well presented, they're going to have more faith in the data that you give them to be able to make those big decisions. Ultimately, your name will spread around the business and your work will speak for itself. You'll gain more visibility in the business, increasing the chance for recognition, promotion, and new opportunities. Right, so let's go through the fundamentals of a dashboard design process. So step one is to identify what the user actually needs to use the dashboard for. In UI design, and this is often called a user flow. Take for example a e-commerce site, a user pretty much just wants to browse for products and then pay for those products and order them. So if we take this principle and apply it to data analytics, a stakeholder will most often need a dashboard just for monitoring purposes. They may also need the ability to filter and drill down into the data. Step two is to design the layout, and this is based on the user flow. There are a million different ways to design a dashboard, and there is no right answer, but as long as you identify the main metrics the user needs and allow them to get what they want, you will be fine. Step number three is your design system. The four most important things to decide on before building your dashboard are colors, fonts, buttons and icons. For colors, you generally stick to one primary color or a primary and a secondary color. I'd recommend using tools like ChatGPT or real-time colors to suggest colors that work well together. I'd also avoid using green and red as your primary color because these are universally perceived in data as green is good and red is bad. Save red and green to indicate error and successes. For fonts, choose one or two fonts and stick to them. And also make sure that if you are presenting numbers in a table that the font is monospaced, where each character has the same width, so that numbers don't look smaller or bigger than they actually are. Depending on where you build your dashboard and share it, you might be limited to system fonts. If you're developing a dashboard for the web, a good source for fonts is Google Fonts. For buttons, there are so many different styles and designs that you can use, but it really depends on what data you're trying to change or show. For example, if there's an on-off state for your data, then a toggle button is best, or if you're choosing between two or more options, then a standard button where you have three options and just the text in the button is fine. You want to think about how you visually communicate what selection is indicated to your user. So if your button is selected, then you want to show the primary color, and if it's not selected, then you either want to ghost the color or you want to have a slightly different shade of the color. Icons can be used to elevate your design in terms of professionalism and style, and they're also a bit more user-friendly if you want to indicate changes to graphs and tables. For example, you could have a graph icon and a table icon to indicate a switch between two different views of the same data. A really great source for icons that you can download as SVG files is Google Fonts or Material Design Icons. Now onto step number four which is building the dashboard and while you're doing this you want to have six design principles in your mind. The first is visual hierarchy. You want your eye to be drawn to the place that is most important for the stakeholder or user. This can be achieved by positioning, sizing, different fonts, different weights, different colors. The next principle is contrast, and this means that you need to be able to distinguish the elements that are important from the background or other elements. The most common way to do this is with color, so that the colors at the front don't clash with the other colors. Think about balance and white space. You don't want too much information in one place because it gets lost and the user doesn't really know where to to look. You need to let the visualizations breathe and not be crammed together. While you're doing all of these, you need to make sure that you're being consistent. For example, make sure that one button looks like another button and interacts and performs the same way another button does. Another principle is that simplicity is often always best. You don't want to be sending your stakeholder on side quests to be able to find a filter that they want to drill down in the data. And then the last one is feedback. Make sure that the buttons that you're clicking actually have a bit of response so that it feels like a button. And if you're filtering Filtering data, make sure that you know that the data has been filtered. So give the user some feedback to say these filters are applied. One way I like to do this is using a light bulb icon. And that's all for this video. I hope you liked it and hope you got some use out of it. If you did, drop it a like and I'll see you in the next one.